Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I in the in the hotel. This meeting. Yeah, yeah, you also stay there. Yeah, I had to come with it. I'll move the next one. Okay. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a big one down. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The so, so they have. So have they updated the dome? Have they updated the dome? So in the past they didn't have a private bathroom. Uh -huh. Okay. Alright, we're good to go. Remember to turn on your mic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's already on, right? You ready to go, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're ready to start the next lecture. So this lecture will be from Hong Lu, who's telling us about non-equilibrium effective field theories, hydrodynamics, and emergent supersymmetry. So take it away, Hong. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot for uh, for the invitation. Um, yeah, it's always a great pleasure uh, to be back at the Boulder. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, as the title suggests, uh, we'll uh, discuss um, some recent development uh, to formulate um, effective field theory uh, for long equilibrium systems. Um, so let me uh, first give you uh, some motivation um, why we want to do that. So the, the goal of uh, many body physics, <coughs> say suppose we are, is to um, start with some, uh, say, microscopic description, and then, yeah, suppose we load the Lagrangian, suppose we load the exact Lagrangian, for example, uh, electrons in the metal. And we want to uh, um, predict or explain macroscopic uh, phenomena. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, um, yeah. So this is essentially um, uh, the goal of the statistical physics, um, uh, uh, kinetic matter physics, etc. And uh, except that this task is almost always impossible. Uh, if you want to do it directly, okay? And uh, there's two reasons for that. And the one reason is that typically when you consider many body system, say quantum many body system, and uh, the macroscopic distribution typically contains too many degrees of freedom. And uh, it, it's just too much to, uh, to track all those degrees of freedom. And, uh, and uh, there's also another second very important reason he said, actually, the microscopic physics is typically a collective, uh, a, a, a refract collective behavior. Okay, so even if you can actually, uh, even if you are very powerful to uh, to solve this microscopic system, uh, 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 in general, we are not that powerful. It, even if you are powerful, actually. Uh, 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 it's highly non-trivial how those collective behavior emerge from those uh, uh, from those microscopic degrees of freedom, and so so those microscopic variables typically unsuitable for uh, for those uh, for that purpose. <coughs> It's simply just the wrong kind of variable uh, you want to uh, use to describe uh, 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 whatever low, low energy physics. So um, for, for equilibrium systems, for equilibrium quantities, and right now we have a highly successful paradigm uh, um, to, to deal with this issue. 
So this is so-called the land of uh, uh, Ginsburg. Wilson paradigm, which this is essentially the idea of uh, 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 effective field theory. So what you do is you uh, first you want to identify variables instead of starting with those microscopic variables. You want to add identify variables suitable. For uh, uh, for your microscopy, uh, for your low energy physics, okay. Uh, so let, uh, uh, let me collectively denote those variables chi and suitable for the for the low energy or long distance physics. Okay. And uh, and then the second thing in this uh, 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 this paradigm does is that you just identify uh, uh, the symmetries. And you identify the symmetries. Okay. And then you just write down the most general the most general the low energy factor uh, a low energy factor like Lagrangian uh, um most general, the low energy factor Lagrange, which describes those variables. Okay, and uh, um, so so the and then you then you can just express your partition function of free energy so you express your partition function of free energy in terms of those low energy variables Okay, in terms of those low energy variables, okay. So the basic idea behind this uh, procedure is just imagine you consider some kind of cutoff scale, okay. So you consider you have some scale lambda, and that those chi's are the variables which are suitable for the physics below some uh, below this scale uh, lambda, okay. Uh, uh, so the chi uh, is the uh, variable which is suitable below this energy scale, and the typically. Uh, uh, to do this, uh, you the, the the ideal situation is that the guy uh, a chi corresponding to say some Gaffney's variable, some Gaffney's variables, which they they don't need any yeah they need very small amount of energy to excite them, and then um, then when you then you just integrate out those massive variables those those variables say with a gap. And then you just get this, uh, uh, when you integrate out in your fundamental theory, you integrate out those massive degree freedom, okay? So you integrate out. So, so SEF obtained by integrating out. The massive degree freedom, okay? You got the massive degree freedom. And uh, so, um, yeah, so that is the basic idea. And of course, this procedure in general cannot be done directly. If you can do this directly, then you essentially have solved this theory. Okay. So, uh, so in general, this procedure cannot be done directly. So, uh, so that's why you need the second and the third step. And then you write down the most general possible Lagrangian. You parameterize your low energy physics. And then, uh, then uh, uh, you determine the parameters in this Lagrangian from, say, small number of experiments, and then you can predict uh, uh, a phenomena for larger uh, a set of experiments. Okay. And uh, um, so this paradigm has been extremely successful. Uh, uh, the reason it's successful, uh, it's clear just from the procedure itself, because by focusing only on chi, you have avoided these two uh, essential defects from starting from a microscopic physics. Because you have only concentrated on very small number of freedom, which are suitable for the low energy physics. Okay, for the physics you are interested in. Okay, uh, for the physics you are interested in. And uh, so, so most of our essentially most of our understanding of uh, our, 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 our condensed matter systems 
uh, are based on this paradigm. For example, superconductors, superfluids, magnetism, phase transitions, etc. And also in particle physics, in the standard model, uh, the proper way to think about standard model is also uh, uh, should be thought of as a knowledge effective theory, uh, knowledge effective description, say, of some uh, 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 unknown UV physics. And uh, of course, for the case of the standard model, uh, we are considering states near the vacuum. And here, in general, uh, uh, we are considering, say, highly excited states. Okay. So, uh, any, any, any questions? Good. Okay. But for non-equivalent problems, we are not so lucky. Okay. For non-equivalent problems, we are not so lucky because non-equivalent is actually much, much richer than, than equivalent situations. And actually, uh, uh, most phenomena in life, actually, in, the, uh, in, the, in reality, are non-equivalent uh, 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 processes. And, uh, and the one immediate difficulty with the uh, non-equivalent is that in the non-equivalent situation, we don't have such a quantity such as free energy. So, so in, the, uh, in the equivalent physics, the nice thing about free energy is that this quantity essentially, so when you, so when you put the appropriate sources here, uh, 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 this free energy essentially captures all the equivalent physics. Okay? But, but for long equivalent physics, there's no such quantity uh, uh, which is analog of the free energy, which say captures all the long equivalent physics. And, uh, and so, uh, so just the starting point, we already know, uh, we, uh, it's already not clear uh, uh, what should be the starting point. You write down your low-energy effective theory, and what this uh, uh, low-energy effective theory should compute. And even this question is not clear uh, for the non-equivalent situation. Okay. And uh, so uh, the the um, yeah the goal of my lectures is to show you actually one can actually develop uh, 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 a non-equivalent. He said this kind of uh, philosophy actually can be applied to the non equivalent situation and uh, 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 to develop uh, effective field theory which actually can uh, treat a very large class of physical systems. Okay. Uh, 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 a large class of physical systems. So, so first, um, yeah, so uh, 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 if one, we want to develop, say, some kind of uh, apply this uh, paradigm to non equivalent physics, again, you have to think about two questions. First, is that what kind of quantity you want to compute, okay? Uh, is that what kind of observable you want to use this low energy effective theory to describe? Uh, so this is, uh, of course, the, uh, the first question. And the second question is what are the low energy, uh, what would be the low energy degrees freedom, okay? Uh, 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 what will be the low energy degrees field. So now let me just make some comments uh, 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 regarding what are the uh, 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 low energy degrees field. Okay, for, uh, for the general line equipment situation. Okay. And uh, uh, so, so we normally, so when you go to line equipment, the story is a little bit complicated because of the to, to say something which is gapless is already not a very precise word anymore uh, uh, when you are in a non equivalent situation because of the, uh, often your, your Hamiltonian depends on time, the energy is not conserved, etc. Okay? And uh, 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 yeah, energy may not be conserved. And uh, uh, so, so, so we often uh, uh, sometimes also use the notion called slow modes, slow variables. So, so, these are the, uh, uh, so heuristically, these are kind of the variables which have very long lifetime, okay? And we have very long lifetime. And, and so if you're interested in the low energy and the long distance, long time physics, and then these are kind of variable you should be uh, uh, focused on, okay? You should focus on. And, uh, and, uh, and the, uh, uh, the reason we emphasize slow is that in the long equivalent situation, for example, uh, 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 for a system, uh, even in the finite temperature, you can have gapless excitations which are very short lived, okay? Uh, 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 they have very small frequency, but they actually uh, are short lived. And for those kind of degrees freedom, then we should not worry about them, uh, uh, because they come and go, and uh, you will not uh, observe. Yeah, uh, uh, so they will just uh, 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 essentially they can be integrated out because they have very sh short lifetime. Okay, and uh, so so here we are emphasizing the snow. Uh, uh, um. 
Yeah, for example, in the CFT, so if you say put the CFT at finite temperature, then all those gapless degrees freedom in the CFT will be excited. And those degrees freedom will flowing around in your finite temperature, but those degrees are not coherent. And, uh, and they come and go. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so, uh, so uh, when you can see the non-equivalent process for CFT at finite temperature, you should integrate all those, also those degrees freedom out. Yeah, even though uh, uh, even though they are essentially gap rates. Yes. You have to restrict attention to models where you can separate these scales. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so for example, in the conformal field theory, uh, in the in the CFT case, uh, the scale which typical lifetime will be one over the temperature, and so you want to consider the time scale much longer than that. Good. So, so now let me just mention a little bit about the, what are the typical uh, uh, degrees freedom. So, so it turns out actually one can actually uh, even without going into any specific details, only without looking at any specific system, you can already say a lot about the slow variables uh, in the general line equivalent process. Okay. So, so in general, there are two types of small uh, slow variables. Okay, there are two types of slow variables. And the one type are associated with conserved quantities. Okay? And this kind of, uh, 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 kind of uh, slow mode are actually uh, are universal. They actually exist for all many body systems. Uh, a sufficiently excited many body system is because uh, it, essentially any system which have conserved quantities. And to see that the conserved quantities always these two slow modes and uh, 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 it's very simple. So let's consider we have some long wave uh, 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 long wave lens uh, excitations, okay? Suppose this is the equivalent value and, uh, and so uh, yeah, imagine this is some, then, uh, some direction and uh, this is some the value say of some yeah, some uh, uh, the value of some uh, um, yeah uh, uh, the value of some uh, uh, a variable, and if this variable rho is not conserved, okay, and then it can relax everywhere. So even if even if you have very long wave lens, typically uh, 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 this kind of excitations can uh, uh, can have a very short enough time. Typically, uh, they will relax uh, at the typical time scale of the collision scale. Or, or just mean free time, or, or say if you have, a, uh, uh, say, uh, in the simple system, say in the quantum, in the in the scale invariant uh, in the CFT, that would be one over temperature. Okay. But now, if you have a conserved quantities, so for long conserved quantities, typically uh, you would expect in the medium uh, the lifetime would be very short. Uh, so one over t here, I consider to be a very short uh, a short time. I always consider the time scale much greater than one over t. But if you have a conserved quantity, so if this suppose this row is conserved, say say the charge, say of some yes, yeah, say some conserved charge, and then this cannot be, then then this row cannot be destroyed locally. Okay, it can only be uh, the equilibrium can only be achieved via transport of the row. Okay, so so the so the positive and uh, a positive charge. Then, then should be transported into the negative charge region, and then, and then eventually they will uh, achieve equilibrium. And now in this case, so so here you can only relax by transport. Okay. And now if your wave, now if you take your wavelengths to be longer and longer, and obviously it take longer and longer time for the transport to. Uh, uh, to make it into uh, equivalent situation, so that means this kind of excitation will always have very long lifetime. Okay, so so this always leads to uh, long-lived. Okay. Okay. They always lived long-lived. Yes. Does that mean you generally consider like the associated current as your as your uh, quantity, um, or do you? Uh, you look at the current itself, uh, 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 the, uh, the charge density itself, okay. because only charge density is conserved. Yeah. 
Yes. Sorry, one more time, dumb question. Why is, why is the intuition that these should be long lived modes? It's because the uh, it's because they can uh, the charge cannot be destroyed locally because they are conserved, and so uh, so they can yeah because the total charge of the system is the same, and uh, and if you want to achieve the equivalent situation, say it's everywhere to be the same charge, and the only way is for the excessive charge here to go to here to feel the uh, to feel the deficit of the charge, and the, uh, uh, if this distance, which is typical wavelengths, is very long. And then the time takes uh, then takes infinite time. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So if lambda goes to infinity, and then the relaxation time will also go to infinity. Okay, because the uh, because you need to transport the charge from here to here. But couldn't you have fast transport? Uh, yeah, uh, everything is constrained by speed of light. Yeah. But for like a thing in the lab, I don't think the speed of light is particularly important. Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so, um, so for the thing in the lab, you may have some uh, velocity or some other characteristic velocity. There's always finite velocity, yeah, for the transport. Yeah, for example, uh, in the uh, for this room is controlled by the uh, typical molecular velocity. Good. So. You're assuming local physics only. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. that, that that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, only assume local physics. That's right. Good. So, so that tells you that whenever, so this is the key. Whenever you have conserved quantities, okay, you always have slow modes, okay. And and so this is universal, okay. So this kind of universal. Uh, uh, uh. So this is a little bit like the Goldstone modes when you have symmetry breaking, okay. There, once you have symmetry breaking, then you always have gapless mode. And here, whenever you have conserved quantities, there's always in the medium, there are always the slow modes are, are associated with conserved quantities. Okay. Good. Okay. Then, then the second of type, then the second type of uh, 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 slow modes, uh, then they are non-universal. They are non-generic. They are specific to individual systems. So, uh, uh, for example, you can have a situation if you are near the phase transition. Then there's something called the critical slowdown happening near the phase transition. Then the order parameter, and then can also be a slow mode. Okay. So the order parameter can be a slow mode. And uh, say if you near, say if you have a, 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 a symmetry breaking phase, then the ghost on mode can also be. Uh, the Gaussian boson can also be a slow mode. And uh, say if you need a Fermi surface, if you need a Fermi surface, sorry, if you need a Fermi surface, and uh, then then there are always slow modes come from the uh, 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 fermionic citations near Fermi surface, okay, and uh, etc. So, so those modes are non-generic. Okay, depend on specific systems. And for general system, which are not near phase transition, say we don't have uh, some symmetry breaking, and we don't have a Fermi surface, and essentially the only thing left are the the only slow modes left at a very long distance are those associated with the conserved quantities. Okay, and those, uh, those associated with conserved quantities, then that then they are the only ones. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Near the second order phase transition, that's right. Yes. Sorry, say it again. So, uh, 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 yeah, if I heard you correctly, the order parameter does not have to be associated with any conserved quantities. Uh, uh, for example, if you can see the icing model, uh, 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 say uh, uh, icing model near the critical point, and then you will have uh, uh, then the order parameter, the relaxation of the order parameter near the uh, critical point will will be very slow, and will be very slow, and that should be incorporated in your low energy physics. 
Yeah, that time dynam that dynamics, that relaxation dynamics should be inco uh, included in your knowledge. So, uh, you are talking about the physical model, the physical model, the physical this can be equivalent phase transition. So, so this says the Lie equivalent phase transition, but you consider, uh, for example, uh, uh, time dependent correlation functions. Uh, for the for equilibrium uh, phase transition, and there, uh, for example, if you look at say if you have phi t phi zero, uh, say for icing over the parameter, and then this will have some power law uh, uh, near the critical point, and uh, and so that uh, indicates this critical slowdown exactor, and so uh, that indicates the uh, phi the order parameter should be part of the non leap mode. What is the process that makes the order parameter slow as opposed to other gaps? It's it, it's because of the uh, it's because we are near the critical point and the um, it's essentially due to the scaling behavior. Uh, you approach your CFT. Yeah, essentially the Euclidean part is described by CFT, and then the time is also controlled by that kind of dynamics. Good. Okay, so, so for generic systems, essentially these are the only ones, okay? These are the only ones. And, uh, um, yeah, of course, the, uh, uh, the theory, the Lorentz theory governing those modes uh, has been well known for many, many years, hundreds of years, if not thousands. So, so these are the hydrodynamics, okay? <laughs> so the theory governing conserved quantities, say low energy theory, conserved quantities, essentially just hydrodynamics. And uh, um, somehow, where are the other chalks? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so the hydrodynamics, and the, those slow modes are just w uh, what we normally call the hydro modes. Okay? So the slow modes are, uh, we normally call the hydro modes. Uh, uh, the hydro modes. Okay? So, so essentially the hydrodynamics is the universal low energy effective theory for essentially uh, all many body systems, okay? Uh, for all many body systems at sufficiently uh, uh, long wavelengths, uh, uh, long wavelengths. So that's why actually hydrodynamics essentially is ubiquitous in physics. It, it, it governs physics in many, many different subjects from our real life, uh, uh, a hurricane, weather to uh, 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 a star formation, galaxy formation, cosmology, evolution, etc. And also, um, also, the hydrodynamics has played a very important role in, in, in modern uh, condensed matter physics, in modern condensed matter physics. And, uh, 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 for example, recently people discovered that the graphene, say electrons in graphene, they actually move like a fluid. And rather than uh, naively, the, uh, naively electrons in the metal, they move ballistically, uh, 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 say like a, a, a billiard balls. But actually, people discovered that in the graphene, uh, actually electron moves like uh, electrons move like actually fluids. They can go around the barrier rather than collide with the barrier. Okay, and uh, and also there uh, uh, people have many strong suspicions that maybe in certain strong, strongly correlated materials, may even including say high DC superconductors, uh, uh, hydrodynamics may also play a very important role in the in the uh, in the electronic physics there. Okay, and also um, in in heavy ion collisions, when people collide heavy ions at Brookhaven and uh, and LHC to form this so-called quark-gluon plasma, and uh, so this droplet of quark-gluon plasma, they uh, they essentially behave like a fluid. Okay, they behave like a very good fluid. And also uh, in the ADS-CFT correspondence, uh, um, the hydrodynamics is mapped to the gravity. Uh, um, and, uh, and the, uh, the, the classical equation motion of hydrodynamics is mapped, say, to the, uh, to the Einstein equation. 
and uh, etc. Okay, and uh, and also physics of the black hole uh, uh, plays a very important role in uh, uh, in these relations. So uh, so these hydrodynamics essentially everywhere, and actually may also be related, uh, may also be underlying say say this kind of quantum many body chaos. Uh, 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 Juan was uh, uh, we've been talking about. Okay, so so despite despite this known and the glorious history of hydrodynamics. But hydrodynamics still have some very important defects. It's because it's still formulated, after so many years, it's still formulated as a phenological theory. Okay, it's still a phenological theory. So you actually need to, many input of this theory needs to be put in by hand. Okay, need to be put in by hand based on physical intuitions, etc. And they're not derived from first principle. And, uh, and so this is one thing. So you just say the first is not from first principle, not from. So I will make this more precise a little bit later. And the second very important defect of hydrodynamics is that it's formulated as an equation motion. So uh, again, I will uh, uh, review this a little bit more explicitly later. But but if you have studied some uh, um, high school physics, you know hydrodynamics are equation motions. So so that means that means you cannot treat. Fluctuations systematically. Okay, cannot choose fluctuations systematically. Okay. But but the fluctuations are important for many uh, uh, aspects of physics. So for example, uh, uh, say for example in the context of phase transition. So before Wilson, people were able to treat the phase transition say using mean field. And uh, and only after the Wilson we can actually treat the uh, fluctuations of all the parameters, fluctuations, those things properly, and then you see all then you can describe whole rich uh, 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 phenomena from that. Okay, and so the defect of hydrodynamic is actually cannot treat the fluctuations, and so so you always uh, it's always like some kind of mean field approximation. Okay, it's always like some mean field approximation. And uh, uh, so, so now let me just mention it quickly. Uh, 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 so what we want to do is we want to develop the hydrodynamics. So, so, so we want to really develop a, a low energy field, low energy effective field theory for conserved quantities as a genuine, uh, as a genuine uh, uh, a low energy, uh, 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 as a genuine effective field theory uh, in the sense of this Nando uh, Ginsburg Wilson uh, 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 perspective. Okay. And uh, and uh, and that way, then then we should be able to treat the fluctuations systematically. Okay, we should be able to choose, treat the fluctuations systematically, and then we should also be able to explain uh, many phenological features, uh, 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 phenological input which you have to put in by hand uh, uh, in hydrodynamic itself. Okay, so 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 just to uh, give you a little bit uh, uh, flavor, so let me just quickly mention uh, a, a few cases which the uh, uh, the. The, hydrodyna uh, the hydrodynamic fluctuations has not been uh, important. Okay, uh, has not been important. So the first example uh, uh, is what uh, uh, people normally call non-equivalent phase transitions. So this is a place which hydrodynamic to have a theory of uh, uh, fluctuating hydrodynamics could be very uh, 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 could be fruitful. So let me give you a simple example of this, which we, which we actually, uh, uh, many of you, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 so, so one of the simplest example of this non-equivalent phase transition, this is thing called the Rayleigh really Ballard problem. So this is a very simple system. Say you can see that you have a tank of water, which you say you can do it at home, or or consider say just some air, just, yeah, just some fluid, put in between two plates with different temperature. Okay, so suppose T2 greater than T1. Okay, 
So, so you heat from the bottom a little bit, okay? Or you cool in the uh, up. And uh, if the temperature difference is small, so at the beginning this system just develop a, a gradient of temperature from the bottom to the top, okay? But we know just from your experience of boiling water that it, now if the temperature difference is big, and now they will start having the convection, okay? Uh, they, uh, 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 the system will have the convection. Okay, they will convective flow uh, between them. And uh, the transition between these two is like some kind of second order phase transition. Okay, it's controlled by, by hydrodynamic fluctuations. Uh, there's some kind of hydrodynamic instability and, uh, and controlled by hydrodynamic fluctuations. And, uh, and so far this, yeah, this is a very old problem. This is a 100 year old problem. But so far people mostly just treat it as a mean field uh, approach to treat this problem. And uh, so potentially, if you have a theory of, uh, of fluctuating hydrodynamics, then you can treat it actually just using the Wilson, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, as Wilson treated the, uh, uh, the, uh, the equivalent phase transition, and maybe now we can treat this kind of problem. Uh, uh, um, yeah. so, so a second example, which uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the hydrodynamic fluctuation may become important, is that the, uh, the transport uh, we may see the uh, uh, running of the transport parameter. So, we scale. So when you write down hydrodynamics, the inside the parameter, uh, 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 which appear as parameter of hydrodynamics, including viscosity, Conductivity, etc. Okay, and uh, so so they are normally ch so they are parameters in your uh, in your hydrodynamics, and uh, f from our modern point of view, they are couplings in the in this low energy effective theory. Okay, in the low energy effective theory, and then when you treat this when you treat this hydrodynamic from equation motion, essentially with a mean field, and then they are just constant; they don't do anything. But now, if you include the fluctuations and then just ask ordinary couplings in your quantum field theory or statistical field theory, then they will run with scale, okay? And they actually, they, they will actually depend on now, depend on your scale. And, uh, and such kind of running actually can be important. Uh, uh, such kind of running can be important. Uh, uh, so this is also related to uh, 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 something people call long time tail. So if you look at, say, the two-point function which controls the conductivity or viscosity, and then you will see some kind of uh, uh, a power law ta uh, tail dependence on time, etc. Okay. And in certain situations, for example, near the phase transition, near an equivalent phase transition, near a certain equivalent phase transition, it can happen, for example, that this conductivity, when you run to the low energies, okay, when you run to the, uh, to the large distance scales, actually this can actually diverge, okay, uh, can actually diverge. And then, then that actually can, uh, can affect uh, uh, many uh, uh, other important quantities, say like dynamic or exponent, etc. And so, yeah, so this just gives you an example that such kind of running of transports uh, uh, can actually be very important. And so far, this kind of thing, uh, uh, again, I only treat it at the phenomenological level, okay. Logical level. So um, yeah, so under the third example, uh, 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 which such thing can be useful is heavy ion collisions. So in heavy ion collisions, people create this quark and plasma, which are some very tiny force of quark and plasma. Okay, it's uh, 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 say the size is about 14 fermi. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, for such a small system, statistical fluctuations can be important, okay? And uh, 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 so, so if you really want to proper, properly uh, to describe experiment, you may need to, uh, to, may need to include the, uh, 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 such kind of hydrodynamic fluctuations. And also, in high-end uh, high collision, uh, a very important uh, the, uh, 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 near term uh, uh, a project is to search for this so-called so QCD critical point. So if you look at the QCD phase diagram, there's a temperature and there's a chemical potential, a baryon chemical potential, and it's believed that there's a second order critical point somewhere in this phase diagram. And we don't know whether where it is, 
And if you want to scan around this critical point, and the way you see the signature of this critical point is to see the fluctuations, okay? Uh, uh, because the, the critical point of, uh, fluctuation become very big, and that will be the signature, say, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, found the near by the critical point. Yes? Does lattice QCD see this uh, position? No, lattice QCD is not very easy to see because it's a finite, uh, finite chemical potential, so you have uh, a sign problem, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, uh, so to understand hydrodynamic fluctuations would be very important. Uh, say for scanning such kind of critical point. Yes. Um, sorry, I have a, a dumb yeah. question. What do you mean when you say hydrodynamics and hydrodynamic behavior? If the field theory is the physics of waves, what does it mean that my waves are acting like a fluid now as opposed to the generic field theory? Like, and I call this scalar field like a mass field or something like that. Like, what, 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 what restrictions on the equations do I have? Like, what, if, what equations do you look at and you say, oh, that's hydro, not just generic field theory? Oh. So uh, I will explain that. Uh, uh, so, so the first, so uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So this is a question we will explain. Uh, uh, you will see very explicitly later. You will see very explicitly later. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly, exactly, so yeah. I think that, that why this might be an equilibrium disposition that should be checked that you have a non-equilibrium problem that's not clear to me that you will be actually not if you're significant of this Yeah, sure, 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 exactly. So so the realistic, uh, realistic to probe this uh, critical point is a very, very complex physical problems. And the, but the but fluctuation will play a key role. Fluctuation will play a key role. There was another. Yeah, I have just a very simple question. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that's a very good question. So uh, so uh, so the example which I have in mind. So this conductivity is a coated conductivity. It's a it's a it's a conductivity for some conserved charge. Uh, uh, so uh, so one example of this happening is a binary fluid, uh, uh, which you have two kind of fluid, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, then the phase transition corresponding to from. Uh, from uh, uh, equal density to the uh, density not equal. And so this conductivity is conductivity for the difference of the, uh, uh, that density. So it's not the general conductivity. Yeah, it's some kind of uh, observable of that theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I say it in the generalized sense. Yeah. Good. Okay, so, so um, and, uh, and then, then, then speculating a little bit, so uh, 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 from ADSFT, uh, the, uh, uh, the hydro fluctuations will map to uh, essentially the quantum gravitational corrections. Essentially from the gravity point of view, uh, 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 these are corresponding to the fluctuation of the metric, okay? Uh, a fluctuation of the gravity itself. And uh, so, uh, so hopefully, maybe uh, by uh, uh, understanding the uh, the hydro and then uh, from the uh, also from ADST perspective, then that can also give us a deeper way to understand, say, the ADSFT correspondence or maybe the gra uh, uh, gravity exception. Okay. So, uh, uh, of course, there are many things uh, 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 one can still say. Uh, uh, let me just finally mention something very speculative. Uh, 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 very speculative is that you have such a theory to really formulate the hydrodynamics as a general knowledge factor field theory may be also useful for treating the problem of the turbulence. So turbulence, of course, has been a well-known problem for many, many years, uh, uh, also uh, 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 more than 100 years. And uh, so, so people in the 50s or 60s already observed somehow the best way to think about turbulence is not to track a specific turbulent flow, okay? Uh, not to look at a specific turbulent solution, but looking at the class of turbulent solutions, okay? To do some kind of ensemble average uh, of the, uh, in the space of turbulent solutions. And, uh, and then they observed already in the 50s and 60s in the Soviet school, they, 
they were shocked by that the kind of technique they used to describe turbulence is very, very similar to the kind of technique we used to describe quantum field theory. Uh, uh, exactly uh, 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 the thing we do in the quantum field theory. So, uh, so people have been searching for many, many years that somehow maybe there's a quantum field theory behind the turbulence, okay? Uh, behind turbulence. So, so, so now if we now really treat the hydrodynamic as a low-energy effective field theory, and now maybe you can imagine maybe turbulence can arise as some kind of a fixed point because of, uh, the turbulence have scaling, etc. Maybe it can arise as some uh, 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 fixed point uh, uh, of this kind of uh, uh, statistical field theory which we use to describe hydrodynamics. And then, uh, uh, so that maybe provides some additional uh, technical tools which we can uh, tackle this problem. Okay. So, uh, so this is just some uh, uh, um, general uh, motivations for uh, 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 for uh, for understanding uh, uh, this hydro as effective field theory. So, so now let me just now say say my plan. So now plan. So, so the next thing I will do is I will describe the general setup general setup for formulating a class of non-equivalent uh, 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 effective field series. Okay. And, uh, um, and then, then I will just uh, apply this to develop To develop uh, uh, a non-equivalent effect, non-equivalent EFTs for conserved quantities. Okay, for conserved quantities, and in particular, yeah, uh, for conserved quantities of a general many-body system. Okay, of a general quantum, of a general quantum system. So we always consider a system is in the medium, say it's a highly excited system, not say say near the vacuum. Okay. And then we will see once you formulate this theory, then the hydrodynamics then arise. Then standard hydro just arise as the equation motion. So once you have formulated properly this knowledge effective field theory uh, for conserved quantities, and then you find that the, uh, the traditional hydrodynamics indeed just arise as equation motion of this theory. Okay. And, uh, but, but this theory will be able, uh, in particular, even though this is a Lagrangian field theory, actually it's incorporates uh, dissipation and uh, 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 dissipative effect, retardation effect, etc. Okay, fluctuations, etc. And uh, so, so in this approach, so we will actually find that the classical, in the sense I will define later, the classical hydro is mapped to a quantum field theory. Okay, so, so essentially statistical fluctuation here is described by some kind of, uh, uh, described by quantum field theory. So this is very similar to, to what you do in the equivalent field theory. Uh, say they are a classical statistical partition function then can again be described by a, by, a, by, a, by a field theory, yeah, like uh, uh, like icing critical points, and uh, and uh, you can also, in principle, include the quantum generating quantum uh, 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 hydro. This is a little bit more tricky to define, and then we see some hints that this will be some kind of deformed, some kind of deformed quantum field theory. So so this theory already have h bar. So, so this you already have uh, some kind of h bar which captures the scale of the classical fluctuations. Say, say this h bar is like one over the entropy density, okay, uh, which characterizes your uh, standard uh, uh, statistical fluctuations. But now we see actually, uh, but now if you're including a genuine h bar, so this you see we have to be further deformed to put in another h bar, and uh, and so this is quite uh, 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 yeah yeah. So. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 so this is uh, um, yeah. Just uh, uh, well, and then the, then we will see, and uh, uh, based on this formulation, then we we see actually uh, there will be a 
then I will give a loop proof of second law of some dynamics. Okay, a loop of second law of some dynamics. So, so traditionally, the second law of dynamics has been proved using so-called Boltzmann's H theorem. Okay, uh, Boltzmann's H theorem. And but Boltzmann's H theorem only applies to dilute gases. And so, uh, so this will be a, 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 so this proof actually will apply to more general class of systems. Okay, uh, a, a more general class of systems. And uh, so, so I believe actually this approach may actually provide some kind of hydrodynamic approach, uh, uh, potentially a hydrodynamic approach to, to quantum information. Say uh, to uh, uh, to those reduced density matrix, say, uh, say for quantum systems. And finally, if I have time, then I will show that generic system. So, so one key thing here, one key concept that we, one key thing I will introduce here is a notion, is a precise mathematical notion of local equilibrium. Okay, so so when you consider such a kind of long wave fluctuation, uh, uh, when you consider such a kind of long wave disturbance, okay, and then then at some short distance scale, at some distance scale which much larger than your UV cutoff, but much smaller than this wavelength, then the system should be in local equilibrium, okay. And so this is the con uh, uh, heuristic way to say this must be in local equilibrium. But now the key question is how do we incorporate this local equivalent concept into an effective field theory, okay? In the standard hydrodynamics, this is put in by hand. So in the standard hydrodynamics, this is put in by hand, and this is the key of hydrodynamics. In the formulation of uh, hydrodynamics, this is the key. Uh, you have to impose that the system is in the local equivalent. Uh, but, but you cannot put in by hand when you formulate it as an effective field theory. And then, then we find actually there's a precise mathematical way of doing it, and actually, uh, uh, you do it just by importing a Z2 symmetry. Okay, turns out that this, uh, 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 there's just a Z2 symmetry which does this for you. Okay, uh, uh, a Z2 symmetry does for you. And then you can show that for any system, with this local equilibrium, with this Z2 symmetry, okay, uh, there's always an emergent supersymmetry. Turns out the system is supersymmetric. Okay. Turns out the system is uh, supersymmetric. Okay, so, uh, so this is my goal, but I'm, uh, 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 to cover those topics, I may not be able to reach all of them. So, so we will see how far we can go. Um, good. Any questions? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting, indeed, indeed. So, so, um, uh, um, yeah, hydrodynamic seems to be valid, much more general. Yeah, in, in much more general situations. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, making this thing precise as a D two symmetry in your effective field theory, then we can imagine drop it and see uh, uh, what happened with it. Or, or replace it with something else. And actually, there are many interesting systems. Uh, 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 for example, this KPZ systems, uh, 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 which does not have local equilibrium, which is not in the local equilibrium in the traditional sense. But somehow they have a very nice uh, infrared fixed point, etc. And uh, anyway, yeah. So uh, uh, indeed, uh, 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 that would be a very interesting question. Uh, uh, yeah, this would be an interesting question to, to explore what replaced this kind of uh, uh, D2 symmetry. Yes? Is the supersymmetry local? Yeah. Yeah, supersymmetry is a global one. It's, a, it, it's not a local symmetry, it's a global supersymmetry. So it merges into a global symmetry. Yeah. Can you have a local you can have it. You can have it. Uh, the two formulations of it. There's one version uh, uh, which, if you don't fix a gauge, uh, if you don't fix some local symmetries, then supersymmetry looks like local. 
but, but then you can fix some uh, uh, local symmetry, then super symmetry will, uh, will be a global. So essentially, it's like a global super symmetry. Yeah, so, so what this does is that super you have two fermionic charge that anti commute into translation in the time direction, uh, in the time direction, but the shift is given by the local temperature. It's given by local temperature. And since the local temperature depends on the space time, so it looks like it's like local SUC. But then you can actually fix some other degrees of freedom and then make that local temperature uh, to, uh, to be constant. And then, uh, then the supersymmetry become like global. Good. OK, so, so now let me just go back to, to, to do the first one. Uh, or try to formulate. So, uh, so now I try to answer the question, what would be the object we should look at to replace this Z? OK? So what object we should look at to replace this Z? Yeah. Local, in one frame, it looks like local supersymmetry. Do you get local supergravity too uh, before gauge fixing? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 it sounds like that, uh, but but that theory we have not systematically studied. We just have written it down. So uh, um, yeah, yeah, it does like that. Yeah. Yes. That I don't know yet. Um, uh, that I don't know yet. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's our hope. Uh, you said this supersymmetry will help you to say find the infrared fixed point of this large class. Yeah. So the key we want to uh, uh, one of the goals to formulate this kind of theory is you want to explore what are the infrared fixed point of those theories. Uh, they may tell you some new physics, etc. And uh, um, yeah, so the supersymmetry may help that uh, in that aspect. Yeah. Oh, I should also say uh, uh, there's uh, uh, of course many papers, uh, including our own papers and uh, 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 other papers on this subject. So so uh, so normally do people put the references on this wiki page or what is the standard practice? As much as you want, please. Hmm? Yeah. Put more than you think we should put there. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Okay, so I will, uh, so I will not write references here. I will put the uh, wiki uh, 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 in the wiki page. Yeah. So let me just uh, uh, mention uh, some of my my own collaborator. Uh, uh, it's Paulo. Paulo Vioso, Mike Crossley, and Pingao. And also, I'm working with Sri uh, 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 Rajagopa. <coughs> Good. Um, okay, so now let's uh, talk about what should replace this uh, uh, um, this partition function when you go to line equivalent situation. Oh, only 15 minutes left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that makes me feel like uh, um, a beginning graduate student because people say a beginning graduate student always give too long introductions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so now let me talk about the formulation of the um, uh, uh, how we should replace this. So this is. Uh, something called the closed time pass. Okay, so, <coughs> so in partition function, yeah, so, uh, so, so normally when you do the partition function, you just integrate, say so you integrate your fundamental theory on the Euclidean, uh, uh, on the Euclidean, say, uh, say this is your fundamental theory, then you just do the path integral on the Euclidean manifold with periodic time, with periodic time. And uh, uh, so particle physics, 
we are often interested in, say, S matrix, etc., so, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the scattering amplitude. So you start with some initial state, and then what you do is you do a pass integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, and then so, so the pass integral then gives you the map from the initial uh, state to the final state, okay? Uh, uh, give you the transition amplitude from the initial state to the final state. And uh, so these are the things we are familiar with. But if you are interested in the non-equivalent dynamics, then, then the object you are interested in is, is a little bit different. Is the, uh, so the typical uh, 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 observer we are interested in would be, say, correlation functions in some density matrix, okay? So this density matrix, of course, can be a pure state, and this is just some state, okay? The, uh, this is just some, some macroscopic state, okay? So we are interested in the, uh, 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 by microscopic state, which is a state which is a medium, okay? It's not uh, near the vacuum, okay? And uh, so this is the kind of object we are interested in. And uh, so this tells you actually, now we, uh, uh, when we look at the path integral formulation for this kind of questions, we need to think a little bit differently. Uh, uh, so if you look at the, the uh, evolution, so if you look at the time evolution, say, of a density matrix, it evolves as follows. Say, um, it evolves T, T0, say rho 0, suppose rho 0 is the density matrix at some, some initial time, and then you dagger T, T0, okay? So that means, yeah, uh, 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 let me use the Ti, Tf, Tf, Ti. So, so the real, and uh, so, so if you write it this in the path integral, and then you have something like this, you start with the initial state rho zero, and then you move in time, which is the, so, so if you, then you can use the standard technique to translate the evolution operator in terms of path integral, and then you have essentially have two lines, one uh, uh, corresponding to u, which propagates forward in time, and the one goes one into U dagger, which pro pro uh, propagate backward in time. Okay. Okay. Propagate backward in time. So now the simplest thing. Okay. Now the simplest thing you can do. Okay. Uh, and now the simplest thing you can do is just to trace. Okay. Just consider. Uh, 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 consider taking the trace around, say, uh, at the t uh, 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 t equal to t f. Okay. And then, then when you insert the operator here, okay, then that will give you a class of operators, okay? So that will give you a class of uh, 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 operators. Uh, so that will give you a class of observables, okay? Uh, so you trace it, and, and now since this is run in the real time, and now this gives you a class of a real time observables, okay? Give you a, a, a class of real time observables. Uh, give you a class of real-time observables. So, uh, so it's convenient to write this in terms of the uh, uh, generating functional. So, uh, so you can define this as a generating function as following. So z phi 1, phi 2, initial phi 1, phi 2, is defined to be trace rho 0, then you do pass ordered, you do pass ordered, the exponential I phi one O D T minus sorry. I don't have enough space. So this pass ordered times exponential I phi one. So pass ordered phi one O one phi O D T minus I phi two O D T. Okay? So so that means when you want to insert operators there so the simplest way is just you introduce a source for some operators, uh, for, as O is some operators that you are interested in. So the O is the operator you're interested in. Then you just insert, uh, it put a different source for that operator on this two leg of the contour. Okay, a two leg of the contour. And uh, 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 um, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, let me put O1 here, uh, O1, O2, okay? And the, uh, the matter sign, so let me just make some remark on, uh, uh, on this expression. So, so O1, O2 actually are the same operators. So 
So one and the two just di 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 only distinguish the location. Okay. So so one and two only distinguish location. So so one means inserted in the first leg. Two uh, it means inserted in the second leg. Okay. So now if you put different source phi one and phi two on different legs, and then when you take derivative over this source, and then you can get the operators inserted on the different location. Okay. So that's what we want to define here. Yeah, and then this minus sign, it, it just uh, because of the minus sign is from the time, uh, uh, from the reverse, the, the uh, uh, reverse, the, the counter, okay? Just from the reverse counter, okay? So I, uh, I only written time integration here. Uh, of course, the uh, you should imagine the space uh, integration too, okay? So, so by closing this. By taking the trace at one end, and then you insert operators, this gives you a class of observables. So this class of observables are typically of this type. So when you take when you take derivatives, when you take derivative over phi one and phi two, when you take derivative over phi one and phi two. Then you just get the typical observable. So, so the typical observable is T anti ordered. So on the second, so when you, because of the, any, uh, uh, anything from the path integral is ordered from the path integral. So on the second leg would be t uh, anti time ordered, and uh, in the first leg would be time ordered. Okay? So the typical observables would be like this O2, T1. O2, say Tn, and, uh, and the T, O1, say uh, 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 Tn plus 1, O1, T, O, oh, just uh, now you can only uh, uh, O. Yeah, O, O1, the 2, yeah. Yeah, O1, the 2 just used to distinguish whether it's in the same lag or the second lag, okay? And then once you write in terms of correlation functions, then you don't have to put this. One, the two, and then say to T M. Okay, so this will give you a class of observables like this. On the first leg, it's time ordered. On the second leg, it's anti-time ordered, and anti-time ordered always put before the time ordered. Okay, yeah, that's just what that counter tells you. Okay, uh, give you a class of observables. Like and you can consider more complicated situation. You say, oh, instead of looking at these two. Instead of that, I can do rho t f say to be u u rho zero u dagger u dagger. Okay, so I can separate u into two steps, and then I can do a counter like this. Okay, or I can uh, put more u here, then I can get more li uh, lines, always even number of them. Okay, so uh, so this corresponds to a class of them, which I just uh, stop at two u, and then I have only have two counters. And, uh, and that gives you this class of correlation functions. Okay, this gives you this class of correlation functions. So it turns out that this class of correlation functions are precisely what is relevant for most uh, 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 physical problems. Okay, uh, 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 relevant for most physical problems. So, so now let me explain that. So, so for that purpose, I have to do a slightly uh, a transformation. So, so, so I will uh, introduce a new rotation. So I will introduce phi r equal to one half phi one plus phi two. So remember, phi one and phi two are the sources of the two different legs, and then then I will introduce the difference of them phi a phi one minus phi two. And similarly, I introduce o r equal to one half o one plus o two. And O A equal to one half uh, equal to O one minus L. Okay, so this is uh, um, okay. And then, so you should again you should view this index as form uh, index on the O uh, index on the phi are generally indexed because phi one and phi two are different. 
And the index on the O should always be interpreted as indicating the location on the contour, okay? Uh, location on the contour, uh, uh, which gives them all, uh, uh, the orderings, okay? Hmm? Uh, yeah, that's right. Symmetric and asymmetric. <laughs> yeah, this is the traditional rotation. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you are the first person to do this, you can introduce some other crazy uh, 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 thing for this. Okay. So now, with this, then this generating functional can be written as phi r phi a then you have something like this trace again pass ordered you know, zero then pass ordered then you have exponential i o r phi a plus o a phi r okay o a phi r and now you can take derivatives with phi Okay, now you can take derivative with phi. So now you can take derivative with phi, uh, phi r and phi a, then you get this kind of correlation functions, okay? So you get, say, G, R, R, A, A, this kind of correlation function with index R and A with, say, W, say, phi. So R, we corresponding wanting to take it really over phi A because this is the, uh, and then you know, phi A and the phi R and the phi R. Of course, I, uh, all at different locations, like this. So this is O R O R O A O A etc. Okay. So so this will give you correlation functions like this, labeled by this R A. Okay, R and A corresponding to you can see the correlation function of O R O R O A. Then that corresponding to take derivative with, uh, back to the opposite symbols. Okay. O opposite symbols. And now. So, so the key advantage of using these spaces is the following. So, so now let me give you an example, okay? So now let me give you an example. Uh, so, so these are just, again, when you look at this, uh, 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 OR, you just replace it by O1 plus O2, and then you order them according to 1 and 2, okay? So now let me give you an example. So now let's consider the simplest case, just a two-point function, GRA, T1, T2. So this gives you, uh, so, so again, let me just put some i here, uh, which I'm not careful here. So, so this gives you a pass ordered OR T1 OA T2, okay? So by definition is that, okay? By definition is that. So now let's look at what this means, okay? So, so, so this I just replaced by one half O1 and O2. So this becomes i pass ordered. So O1 T1 plus O2 T1, and then O1 T2 minus O2 T2, okay? Minus O2 T2. So now I just write, then you just write each term. So when O1, O1, then this just should be time ordered. If you just O1, O1, which is on the first leg, should be time ordered. So I just have time ordered O1, T1, and o, o T1 and O T2. Okay? So this is from first one. And uh, the second term will be minus, which this is O2 and O1. So O2 should always come from O1. So, uh, so this become a white right function O2, O T2, O1, O T1. Okay? And uh, similarly, uh, this one just gives you plus O T1, O T2. And uh, then the last one is all O2, then that gives you anti-time ordered 
OT2 1, OT2. Okay? So I just give you something like this. So now if you look at all this ordering, write it explicitly, then you find that this is just given by I theta T1 minus T2 commutator O1, O2. Okay? Commutator O1, O2. So this precisely gives you the retarded green function. So this uh, precisely gives you a retarded green function. So similarly, so similarly, if you look at GAR, then that gives you the uh, advanced green function. And if you look at GRR, then that gives you a symmetric green function, which is just one half O1, say OT1, OT2. Okay? So that gives you a symmetric green function. So that essentially covers covers all correlation functions at two point function level. Okay? Uh, all correlation functions at two point function level. Uh, we're, we're just past 12. So okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. Please give me uh, maybe two more minutes. Okay, so so now we know so now we know that actually this R A just gave you the basis in terms of the ones and the uh, uh, and the, the retarded green function, and the retarded green function we know is a key for understanding uh, physics because the retarded green function controls the linear response. Okay, so if you turn on some source. Phi t, and then, then the response of this thing under this source, then is given by, say, at the linear rise level, it's just given by retarded green function uh, with respect to the source. Okay, with respect to the source. Okay, so now, just do a little bit combinatorics exercise. Okay, you can generalize to all orders. You can generalize this to all orders. Turns out, all the R, it turns out, the OT, now if you include the non-linear, and so this is just GRA. Okay, this is just GRA, which, I, uh, uh, which we just derived here. So now it turns out if you do all, including all non-linear response of this operator under the source, what you get, if you get GRA phi T prime and plus GRA AA phi T prime phi T double prime, etc. Essentially, this set of, of index with RAA give you all the nonlinear responses. Okay? Give you all the nonlinear responses. Is all the nonlinear responses. all the linear responses of this OT. Okay? So now you can ask what happens to so it turns out so now in the statistical system what you are interested in you are interested in OT also you are interested in the fluctuation of O say, say the second moment and the third moment etc. Okay? And we see that the, the, the second moment, the two-point function, symmetric two-point function, which controls the fluctuation of O, is actually given by the GRR, okay? Again, these patterns continue. All these different moments, they are just related, ON. Yeah, let me just heuristic write the ON. They just can be captured by GRR with NR. And now you can ask, then what is the interpretation of the GRR with some number of A? And that gives you the response of this, this moment to the, to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the uh, 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 sources, okay? So for example, uh, 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 yeah, just let me, sorry, just give you one more minute. So for example, the GRR just corresponding to the symmetric green function. So now GRRA give you now GRA so 
So now you can consider this symmetric green function. Sorry. O T1, O T2, symmetric green function under the source. And then turns out that gives you GRR. So leading order gives you just GRR. And then the next order gives you GRRA source. And the next order gives you GRRAA the source. Is that true? Okay. So now, in fact, so so this set of uh, correlation functions, observable in fact, give you all the higher moment fluctuations and their responses, and the and the and the, and the response of the fluctuations to the uh, uh, sources. Okay. And that actually uh, incorporates almost anything uh, uh, which one can measure in the real lab, real real lab. So that's why this quantity. So that's why this gen uh, generating function is already enough to capture uh, uh, most of the physics we are, uh, we are interested in. And uh, so, so, so we will then build an effective field theory for this quantity. Okay? So, so that will be our analog of the partition function uh, 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 for the, uh, the line equivalent uh, uh, system. Yeah, thanks. Maybe a quick question before that? Yeah. Oh, um, so um, so there is there is non-equivalent definitions, which people define this. In particular, in quantum information community, people define this non-equivalent free energy. But they always have to rely on uh, the system coupled to a constant, uh, constant thermal bus. And then they can define this analog of non-equilibrium or uh, 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 free energy. But that's not the most general thing. Yeah, that can define, uh, uh, yeah, that's a non-equilibrium free energy. And, uh, and it's not like free energy for the equilibrium case, which really essentially covers everything. And in the non-equilibrium case, you can have many, many different definitions. And then they maybe capture some physics, but not other physics. Yeah, there's no such universal quantity which captures everything. Yeah. One more and then we'll go. Yeah, yeah that's a uh, good question. All the AA function vanishes, you can just easily show just from kinematics. Yeah. And uh, if, if you add more functions, do you get like out of time order? Yeah, exactly. So, so now you can ask. So here, I'm talking about the moments. We are talking about the moments. And their and their and the response of those moments, but you can also ask. Suppose we are interested in. Suppose we are interested in the fluctuations of the commutator itself. So suppose we are interested in the fluctuations of the retarded green function itself, and then that is not captured by here, and that you have to use four contours. And, uh, and again, uh, when you include the more and more contours, then that ca uh, captures the higher, higher order of this kind of fluctuations of your higher responses, etc. Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Let's thank Tom again. Mm -hmm. We are at 2 p.m. for primordial cosmology. It's a very interesting talk. I enjoyed that. Thanks. Thanks.